Hi, everyone. See the red subscribe button? Go ahead and click it for me. Thank you very much for your support. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shannon Confidential. I am Shannon, your host, and Shannon Confidential is a podcast about life, love, and everything in between. And today's in between is going to be a lot of fun, mainly because I have a million questions. We will be speaking with sommelier Matthew Loren Lindsay, and he is a uh, everything wine. This man is brilliant. I can't wait to just pick his brain and and, and learn so much from him. He is a distributor, an importer, an educator, a collector, an author, all wine. This, the photos you're going to see throughout this podcast are absolutely breathtaking. He has an online course that he's going to go into complete with certification. He has a book we're going to talk about that makes us all going to be fabulous wine tasters and knowing exactly what we're going to do. And he just, it's just going to be a ball of fun. So he has uh, this, these evenings where you can have a night out with him and he goes through all of his knowledge and it's just a whole series. And he has places that he goes and just events. Really, he is just going to be full of information today. So stay tuned, pour a glass, relax, enjoy it. And up next is Matthew Loren Lindsay. Okay, here he is. Like I said, Matthew Lindsay, he, he is, oh, I can't wait for you all to meet him and let him dive into everything wine. But first, let's just meet the man behind it all. So Matthew, go ahead, take the floor. It is yours. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. My name is Matthew Loren Lindsay. Uh, I'm a sommelier based in Las Vegas. Uh, I like to consider myself an unconventional sommelier. Uh, I do things like wine events and wine festivals uh, unconventional wine, uh, education and things like that. So I like to, uh, I like to make wine very approachable for people. And so I, I, I do it in different ways. So, uh, really yeah, glad to be uh, here with you guys today and, and, and with you. Yeah. So first, what I love, wine. I drink it, I drink it every night. I got to tell yeah. you. So, but how people. did you get to the level, like what brought you to enjoy wine so much to, to then get to the level that you're at? What, how did it come into your world? Well, it's a little, uh, it's a little interesting because um, I grew up in central Oklahoma and uh, basically, you know, pastor's kids. Uh, my, my, my dad worked in, in, in uh, computers, uh, but my grandfather on my mom and my dad's side uh, were, were uh, Christian pastors. And so growing up in central Oklahoma, super involved in the church, uh, alcohol just wasn't a part of our, you know, culinary, you know, our daily conversation at dinner or at parties or anything like that. So I really had no experience with any kind of, you know, alcohol or beer or anything like that. Um, and I even owned a nightclub at 17 years old and I was in charge of ordering the alcohol, yet I never once cared to, you know, try it or anything like that. Um, wow. But, you know, I moved to Las Vegas when I was 24 years old and um, I just kind of, you know, I was working in nightlife and I was around alcohol all the time, uh, but it just wasn't something that I really cared to, uh, you know, partake in. I didn't drink until I was about uh, 27 years old. And um, so I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that I got to skip the, you know, the natty lights and, and the rumble mints and, <laughs> uh, you know, the cheap alcohol the and, and, go, <laughs> and the peach snuff and go straight to like, you know, the really good stuff. Yeah. Uh, the things, you know, and, and, and I think what really intrigued me about wine uh, on the offset was it was just a completely different experience than, than I was used to uh, or than I had seen, right? Um, wine uh, brought people together. It it, it had something more, it had more substance to it. And that was what was really intriguing to me was, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you a quick story. So whenever I uh, was working here in Las Vegas um, in the entertainment industry, uh, Robert De Niro had opened up a new restaurant here at the Hard Rock. And uh, a good buddy of mine was uh, one, of the, one of the managers. 
And he invited me to come check it out. And he said, hey, listen, um, if you have any clients or friends or family that you would like to uh, bring to the restaurant, uh, bring them on by. We'll take care of your meal and, and we'll comp you. And, and he, he extended this offer to me for about six or seven months. I mean, it was a, it was a really long time. So, so you needless didn't go to right away, you waited. <laughs> No, I was going like three days a week. I took a full advantage of it. I was going to say. <laughs> no, but so I would take, you know, if, if clients came into town or friends came into town, I would take them to this particular restaurant. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we were privileged to be able to, you know, enjoy all this amazing food. And they had a really exceptional wine list. And so um, I remember, uh, this is kind of the beginning of my wine journey. I remember that when the waitress came over and handed me this like wine Bible, you know, yes, for me to no preach from. As, the, as the host of the, uh, as the host of the evening, I was terrified to like flip through. Cause I didn't know, I couldn't even pronounce half these words in this, in this wine list. Yeah. Yet I was in charge of, you know, picking the wine to be paired with the food and to, you know, be paired with the experience for the, for the evening. And I just remember not liking that feeling just that, <gasps> Oh my gosh, what if I make the wrong decision? What if I make, what yeah. if I pick out something that's just really weird and, and people don't like it? Yeah. And so, um, you know, that was kind of the beginning of my wine journey. And I remember I would take a picture of that wine bottle uh, that night and then I'd go home and I would just Google, you know, the producer or the region. And I would just try to figure out as much as I possibly could about what we drank that night. And then the next time I went, I tried to be a little bit more educated and I tried to order something different off the menu. It was a very unique position I was in because wine's very expensive. Uh, and so for me to be able to, um, you know, go for six, eight months and just be able to learn wine um, tangibly like that. Uh, at no, you know, financial expense to me. It was an incredibly, you know, privileged position I was in, and I'm yeah, so, so grateful fine. for it because I don't know, I don't know that that I would have had the confidence to be able to go and try wine. And okay. so from from that moment on, um, you know, I really decided to kind of dedicate myself to to wine. It was kind of a slow drip at at, at first. I kind of started as a, you know, mediocre collector, and I would just kind of pick up wine here and there, and 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 enjoy it and then and then I became a little bit more formal in my training but um but ultimately to to you know long story short to get to the answer of your to answer your question um it was just it was just all about the experience it was all about the okay. conversation it was all about bringing people together and it was all about just that communal effect that wine brings that that wine has uh, on groups of people it doesn't matter your social status it doesn't matter your race your religion socioeconomic status it, it it literally just you know once you're around it and yes. this this is the center right nothing else matters and that's that's what really intrigued me by it yeah i grew up in an irish italian family so wine was always around so, so i you, was you know nothing legal but you know i was probably taking little sips at dinner well before i probably should have yeah been. but what's amazing to and me that's a is cultural also, thing yes it's just what it's, it was just there right. and it is just amazing to me, you know, back then we didn't have fancy bottles, you know, they were just bottles of wine and I certainly wouldn't have known if they were anyway, but the amount my palate has changed over the years. I used to love Chardonnay, not so much a Chardonnay fan. I love certain reds. I love Pinot Noirs, but I have absolutely fallen in love with rosés, but the rosés that are more of a blend, not the really light, light one. I, I like the blends that are a little bit more bold. So as you said, it's just part of the socialization. I have wine, I, I have wine with my family. And even just that part of it, I've evolved. I'm certainly, you know, nowhere near anything like you, but I, in all the years of drinking it, it's amazing how much I've evolved and changed and learned. And that's what makes wine, um, that's what keeps people in wine, right? It, every experience is completely different. And I like to like, I like to tell this, this, or give this example of, you know, you could have your one favorite wine, whatever it is, and you could drink that one particular wine uh, for the rest of your life. Let's just say Miomi, right? Everybody loves Miomi Pinot Noir. Um, but the experience is going to, is going to differ. It's going to change day by day, minute by minute, 
depending on where you're at, what environment you're at, who you're with, what meal you're having, what mood you're in. So you might like that one particular wine, but it's going to be different. It's going to change. It's going to evolve. I don't suggest doing that. I actually am a you know, very strong proponent of, of, of you know, challenging your palate and trying things that you don't like. Uh, even if you know you don't like them, try them again. You said you don't like Chardonnay. Well, I implore you to try uh, a Burgundy, uh, uh, you know, white Burgundy, because uh, I didn't particularly like the California butter bombs and, and those types of Chardonnays either, that particular style. I like that crisp apple. Absolutely. So when you try that fresh style of Chardonnay, and that it's more linear, it's more, you know, it has a little bit more, you know, salinity to it, and it's just a completely different experience. And then I was like light bulb went off in my head. Oh my gosh, I like Chardonnay. I would have never thought I said that. And so that's the int intriguing part about wine is it's a different experience and it always will be. And you'll never get tired of it. And you'll never repeat the same experience. And so, you know, it's, it's going to be something that is something to be enjoyed and learned for the rest of your life. Yeah. And just like you said, the difference in Chardonnay is when, when, you know, you're bringing a bottle of wine to the house and someone says, I'll just bring a Chardonnay. It's kind of like people realize that is a huge area. Yeah. Chardonnays can be so many different things. Oak, unoaked, buttery, crisp. Right. It, you can't just say Chardonnay because they're so different too. Right. Yeah. You have to almost know what they like, but that's just, that's the extent of my knowledge right there, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you're, listen, you're, you're far ahead of the curve. I mean, I didn't oh, even know you. that there was even a such thing as unoaked Chardonnay for a really, really long time. So that's my palate involvement. I went from loving that buttery, thick, I call it thick tasting Chardonnay. Yeah, well, I mean, crisp apple. I mean, and, and when you talk about thick, that's part of the malolactic fermentation. It it it, it gives it that kind of richness and that that bold mouthfeel or that heavy mouthfeel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, so we've got a lot to dive into. So, I would say, what are you doing right now? But you're actually doing quite a bit. Where where do you want to start with what you're doing now? Oh my gosh. Um, your call, dealer's choice. Uh, well, <laughs> let's just, okay, let's put it in chronological order. We're, what did you do first? Collector, importer, distributor, educator, or author? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started, um, I started first as a collector. If you, if, if you, you know, I, I, I use that term very lightly, heavy on the air quotes. Because, uh, you know, shortly after, you know, my experience with Robert De Niro's restaurant and, and kind of, you know, getting comfortable around wines, um, I went to a CVS um, drugstore uh, to go get chapstick. Of, uh, you know, it was a random, you know, afternoon stop. And uh, this particular store just happened to be going through a closing. They were getting ready to close down. And so, like, everything in the store was, like, 50% off or something. So I just took my little cart. And I was kind of like, well, maybe I'll find something cool, you know, maybe an extension cord or, you know, <laughs> some Red Bull or something that I can, uh, you know, put in my cart. And I went down the wine aisle and it had been pretty, pretty well worked through. Uh, but I was like, you know, this is, this is it. This is my chance. Like, I'm just going to fill up my cart. So I filled up two carts full of wine. Now, you can only imagine, I laugh at it now because, you know, when you think about CVS wine, it's not the most, uh, you know, refined uh, or expensive, but that's okay. You know, nothing wrong with it. there's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And, and, and again, I'm, I'm incredibly, uh, uh, blessed by that opportunity to be able to do that because it just gave me that confidence and how you get that confidence in wine is you just drink. You don't, you don't necessarily have to know a lot about, about, uh, know a lot about it or, or even really overthink it, just drink it. And what I would do is, you know, I would, this is before Vivino and this is before all the apps and all those types of things. Yeah. I would just go, like I said, I would Google the producer, I would Google, the, you know, the, the website on the back and I would just learn. That's how I learned wine. Um, and so that's kind of how I started as a collector. Then I started going and traveling to all the different wine regions all over the world, China, Australia, obviously California, Finger Lakes. Some of the photos. Oh my Lord. I mean, you want to talk about photo opportunities. I mean, just go to any wine, any wine region. And that was, you know, that was, that was when I think the lifestyle part of it really kind of started um, surfacing in my, in my, in my life. So anytime I went on vacation, anytime I went on a work trip, the number one thing I wanted was, are there wineries around? Is there a wine region? Can I go tr drink wine? Can I go, you know, explore the region? I didn't want to go hiking. I didn't want to go, you know, 
to the baseball field or it's, yeah exactly i wanted to so i i kind of made it a, a point to go you know it's a good idea to, to these wine regions and then uh and then from there i um i got an opportunity to kind of work in wine um you know just selling wine and uh it was uh it was something i went to a wine tasting event and I was talking to one of the guys uh, that was pouring wines and we were just sitting there. It was kind of the end of the evening and we were just enjoying the conversation. And he goes, hey, man, how do you know so much about wine? And I said, um, I don't know. I'm just passionate about it. I don't really feel like I know, you know, that much. But I guess, you know, maybe more than the average bear. And he goes, yeah, would you like to come work for me? And I'm like, well, I don't really know who you are or what you do. But sure, what do you do? Why not? And, um, and so that was kind of my first, uh, uh, you know, entry level job into wine. And I would go do uh, wine tastings at uh, liquor stores and, and, and restaurants and grocery stores even. And um, I loved it. it. You know, I got to drink for free. I got free product. I, but more people. importantly, I got to meet people. I got to talk about wine and I got to drink wine that I otherwise wouldn't have ever tried. Isn't that so, you something you love? It was amazing. It was amazing. I knew I was onto something and I've done some really, you know, some really cool things in my life. Um, and, and I, I don't, I, I can say, I don't feel like I've ever worked a day in my life. And, um, so for me to fall into another passion, uh, I feel really blessed by that. Good for you. Good for you. So now, so now you're, you're in the industry and where, what, when did you realize, okay, I need, I have another level to me. I'm going to go to this part. Um, maybe nine years ago or so, I was just kind of at this crossroads in my life. I, um, had sold a business. Um, I was just kind of looking for my next big thing, right? Like what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do next. And, um, you know, I just, I just realized that wine was it for me. And I decided I needed to kind of jump in, um, uh, with both feet, you know, I was still doing the wine tastings and things like that. And, and uh, I got really inspired um, at one of the tastings that I was doing, um, I was talking to this lovely couple, husband, wife, um, just talking about whatever particular wine was in front of me. I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, but I remember just kind of oversharing details about the wine, the region, the winemaker, the process, all those, all these types of things. And unbeknownst to me, there was a master sommelier standing behind me. And, um, you know, at once the couple left, the master sommelier came up to me, he goes, hey, how do you know so much about wine? Seems to be a reoccurring theme with you. Hey. Right. And that's, and so I kind of smirked and I was like, wait a minute, this, this is all, all too familiar. Somebody else said this to me. And so I just kind of smirked and I go, I don't, you know, I gave my canned answer. I said, I don't know. You know, I just, I'm just kind of passionate about it. He goes, so how long have you been a sommelier? And I, again, I kind of smirked and I said, well, I'm not formally a sommelier. And he goes, are you kidding me? He goes, you are doing yourself. And our industry a disservice by not being not formalizing your education and your passion. He goes, you need to go get trained. You need to go become a sommelier. So can you describe to people what exactly is a sommelier? So in in, in very simple terms, uh, uh, you know, a sommelier is is a wine expert. We're we're you know we know we're supposed to know everything about wine, the production method, the regions, the laws, the grape varietals. Uh, production method, costing, all these types of things. Um, and it's very, very um, difficult um, field to understand just because it's ever evolving, ever changing. Uh, you have to know, you know, multiple languages. The test is in multiple languages. Wow. Um, and, and so there's, there's just a lot that goes into it. I mean, I've, I've broken down many, many times. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm going to med school or something. I mean, it's not quite that intense and not quite that serious, but, um, you know, there's just a lot of pressure there. There really is just a lot of pressure that comes with the studying. Um, but you know, it's just, that's how, you know, you're in the right space when, when you just continue through to it. But I, I heeded his, his advice and, um, the, uh, that very next week I found, um, a, a class, a 10 week boot camp, some way boot camp. Uh, that another master sommelier in town was was holding, and so that was really my first formal, you know, education. And uh, I, I went through that, and then I started just kind of taking, reading every single book I could get my hand on. Uh, I started taking every class that, that this master sommelier was doing, and um, you know, I, I haven't I haven't looked back. So, 
yeah, you've, you've built on on your education because now you're you're paying it forward in different ways. You is when did you become the distributor? Now you've been the collector. You're you know you're doing all this stuff. How did this, you know being a distributor come into your world? Well, that was kind of the next. That was kind of the next level up for me was to kind of uh, take this education and go from you know the informal settings of, of wine sales and education to doing something a little bit more um, formal, I guess is, okay. is the right word. And so started working in distribution a handful of years back, uh, running you know fifty million dollar programs and 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 you know warehouses full of wine. And that was really the big leagues for me. That was something that was just a that was just a a, a great hands on experience to be able to take, um, you know, a wine program and really kind of make it my own. Um, you know, in the first year, um, I you know was able to take um, you know this this enormous warehouse full of wines and really kind of make it what I wanted to make it. I you know cut a lot of wines from the program. I brought in a lot of wines. Uh, from all over the world, I was able to kind of really, you know, impart kind of my vision on yeah, what a, a world-class wine program uh, would look like as a distributor for, from a distributor's perspective in Las Vegas, servicing all the casinos, all the hotels, all the restaurants, liquor stores, uh, you know, uh, chain stores, things like that. So How it was a really, really great that? experience. That's got to be a lot of work. It was, it was, um, but you know, it was, it was, I was doing exactly what I'm, you know, I was doing exactly what I wanted to be doing and to be able to be handed the keys to that kingdom was more than a blessing. It was more than a blessing. Uh, you know, it, it, it was, it was, you know, maybe a little bit, you know, um, I was very humbled by it because I feel like somebody else with more experience should have probably been handed those keys, but I, it was given to me and I, and I felt you know, that I, that I had some big shoes to fill and, um, I had, uh, you know, a big task at hand, but you know, I, I did it, you know, and I was, I was more than happy to uh, rise to the occasion. I, I have to ask, cause I've, I've gone, I've done some wine tastings and I've, you know, traveled and seen some other regions, nothing like you have, that's for sure. And I've seen areas when, let's just say, act of God, mother nature, what have you, and the ability to grow and produce. You being on the, you know, collector, distributor, importer, you know, all of that. Has there been times where, you know, you've gone, oh my gosh, I'm like, I have to, I have to reroute here. Nature got in the way, you know, what, Every, how do you handle that? I've never been able to ask anybody, <clears throat> wow, when things go wrong, what do you do? Every year there's something. Every year there's something, right? Um, the last two and a half years, two years have, have been something that we would have never, you know, assumed would be a conversation. Uh, but there's always, you know, with, in, you know, with mother nature, uh, you know, especially with some, you know, European growing regions, they, they by law cannot irrigate their crop. So what they get rainfall is what they get. And if it's short, it's short. If they get a frost that kills off 40% of their products, 60% of their, of their produce, that's what they have to work with. That's what nature deals you. And you can't, you know, have a greenhouse with perfect growing conditions to be able to supplement your, your yield. Um, California is a little bit different. You know, it's a little bit more lax. We can, we can irrigate our crops and, and, you know, we've got a lot more land space and things like that. But, you know, let's just, let's talk pre and post COVID. So pre COVID, you know, we were primarily worried about the weather and, 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 you know, uh, bugs and things like that. And so we, you know, could kind of predict with some level of accuracy, kind of what our yield was going to be. Now we had some off years, you know, droughts in California and frost and burgundy and things like that, that really kind of play into that. Uh, but then there's other ancillary things like tariffs, right? So for the last few years, three years, um, you know, getting wine from France was incredibly difficult because there was a 25% tariff. Uh, which made which made wine from France almost unaccessible because nobody's going to want to tack on twenty five percent to that, that bottom down. line. Somebody has to pay that, whether it's you know the producer, the distributor, or the end consumer. Somebody's going to have to pay for it. Yeah. And so, um, in that instance, we kind of shifted from featuring wines from France 
to, you know, wines from Italy or wines from Chile or wines from, so you just kind of have to plug and play and say, hey, listen, you know, we may not have, you know, this particular, you know, premier crew, you know, whatever, but let's supplement with, with X, Y, Z. Okay. Now, going into, going into the pandemic, things have changed incredibly. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have to contend with not only all of the weather issues, and the tariffs, some of which have gone, some of which have been reinstated, or new ones have been reinstated. But now we have to deal with shipping supply issues. Yeah. Um, so not only did we have all of those other things, now we have this extra layer of complications of, can we even get product in from these countries? Because they're sitting in a warehouse or they're sitting in a, in, in a, in a shipping container somewhere in the middle of the ocean. And you know now you know, a shipping container that once cost Fifteen hundred dollars now costs six, seven thousand dollars, and not only that, not only are we dealing with that extra layer of cost, now we're dealing with, you know, it used to take three months to get here, now it's taking now it's taking nine to twelve months to get here. So, it's an incredibly. Does that? I'm sorry. Is that going to eventually affect you know how it tastes because it's or is it in you know, are the temperatures and everything that is being shipped and being monitored and so it's just. Kind of just no, it's out. it's sitting in the hull of a ship, you know. So it, the the temperature is pretty consistent, so it's not really okay. going to affect the quality uh, of the wine. It's not going to make it age any faster or slower. Okay. Now, if we're talking about extreme heat, where it's sitting in uh, you know on in a shipyard in 100 degree weather, yeah, it's going to bake the wine and it's going to it's going to destroy it. But yeah, it's it's an incredibly difficult time as importers and as winemakers that are you know exporting their wines. Um, but, you know, you just have to figure out ways to make it work. You know, now winemakers from, you know, Europe aren't shipping necessarily to America and now they're shipping more to, to, to China. And so you just have to evolve and adapt and overcome. Well, it seems like you're, seems like you're doing it. You, uh, it, it, so now you, I really, there's so many things here that you have done. You also are an educator. So Tell us how you, the whole, I mean, you have a course, you have series, explain all of that. Yeah, so, um, I mean, half of this bookcase is wine books, and, you know, I mean, I, let me just, let me just briefly show you here, you know, these are some of my, you know, like, note cards here, you know, and they're all color-coded based on regions, and, you know, so, Again, when I say that wine is incredibly difficult to understand, I say that with all sincerity. And wine is incredibly complex. It's incredibly intimidating. And I know firsthand because I experienced that. I was so afraid of dipping my toe on the water because it, I was just like, what if I buy a bottle of wine that I'm going to hate? What if I, uh, you know, order a bottle of wine for my table that is really expensive trying to show off? And it's a dud. And now I'm out. And, that happen. and it's happened. It's happened to me. And so, um, so, you know, what I found in my own personal experience is that most people, um, they stay safe. They find that one brand that they like, whether it's Mayomi, whether it's Yellowtail, doesn't matter what, what it is. And that's all they drink, right? That's what they take to parties. That's what they drink at the restaurant. And that's a good starting place, but I want you to evolve. I want you to engage. I want you to grow. And so I create, you know, so I, in all my formal education, which is incredibly difficult and stressful, I kind of realized that there was this huge, you know, chasm between like the formal sommelier, bartender, somebody that wants to make a career out of this, you know, the distributor and just the everyday wine enthusiast that just wants to drink wine on a Tuesday night with their, you know, Domino's pizza. <laughs> And so I want, you know, and all the courses that I have taken, all the books that I've read, they're all incredibly formal. They're all, you know, uh, designed with the intention of you're going into, you know, you're going to make a career out of this. And so I said, let me create a course for my neighbors, for my friends, for my, you know, uh, for just the everyday wine drinker, uh, for them to be able to get comfortable enough with wine, uh, to be able to level them up multiple notches, but not where they're, you know, they feel it's over their head 
and it's uh, too jargony and they're just not intrigued and interested anymore. And so I created advanced wine course to kind of marry all the formal education and all the things that are relevant in that matter. Um, and, and kind of, you know, dilute it down to where it's something that's easily digestible to somebody that's just, you know, intrigued by wine, but just doesn't really know where to get any kind of, you know, education. And so, uh, so yeah, I created the course, you know, I wrote a little book, so many secrets on how to drink wine like a pro. And uh, this is kind of a really good entry point into really understanding the structural elements of wine and how to understand and to speak about what you're tasting. Because when we, when we look at wine, when we smell wine, when we drink wine, you know, I hear the same two or three things. Oh, it's smooth. Oh, it's high alcohol or whatever. And it may or may be right. And that's not really the point. You should have a glass with me. It's getting in here and I'm drinking. <laughs> But I really wanted to be able to, um, you know, if you understand what's in the glass and you make it relevant to you, then that's what's going to matter, right? Everything else doesn't matter. All the laws, all the great varietals, you could know all the big name, you know, wine brands out there that are worth tens and thousands of dollars. None of that freaking matters. If you don't understand what's in your own glass, you're never going to, you're never going to understand wine and you're never going to understand how it relates to you. And so that's what this book does. It helps you to understand what's in the glass. It helps you define what you're smelling and tasting. And it helps you understand, oh, what's the difference between acid? What's the difference between, uh, uh, you know, acid and tannins and how it plays in my mouth and the dance that it does on my tongue and on my palate. And once you understand that, then it opens up this huge world for you. And it makes it makes everything a lot more clear for you as far as uh, understanding the wine world and all the all the components that go along with it. Well, I'm diving into that because like I said, I enjoy my wine and I have for a very long time. And as much as I have grown, I have not grown enough. And I am going to pick up on every one of those definitions. I, I'm like a sponge. I read, read, read. And uh, how much fun would it be just to read about something you love anyway? And it's only going to make you better, smarter, more knowledgeable. And you could pay that forward. I, I can't wait to dive into your book. But you have actually, you don't just write about it you back it up you have a course that you can take your course right now you yes. have to explain this because i know you could do it online so i have to hear the details of this yeah so the advanced wine course um again was was something that i felt was a huge need in in just you know the community it doesn't matter where you are or where you're at in the world you know because you can you can do the formal you know, W set education or the quartermaster sommelier, and it's really expensive. It's it's time consuming. It's stressful. But again, not everybody wants that kind of formal education. And so, I created the advanced wine course with the idea of let me come to you and kind of be your personal sommelier and train you on wine and level you up multiple notches um, in the comfort of your own home. So I created this online wine course. It takes about ten hours to go through. You can do it on your own time. Um, in your underwear at, at, you know, at your own pace. At the end, I send you a, you know, formal uh, uh, diploma. Uh, and it, it really is just, you know, designed to um, kind of, again, build, build a bridge between those, that formal education and just wanting to level up. And so uh, this is something that, you know, uh, sommeliers, bartenders, people in the restaurant industry have taken to kind of level up their wine knowledge just so they can sell more wine on the floor. Uh, but then also I've had, you know, retirees take it. I've had housewives, I've had people my age, people younger than me, you know, take it just to be able to feel a little bit more confident ordering wine, drinking wine and uh, uh, things like that. Because, you know, whenever you go to a liquor store, a grocery store aisle, and you have hundreds of different options, what happens? You walk through there and you're like, oh my God, analysis paralysis. I'm terrified. I don't know what to order. I don't know what to buy. Or whenever you get the wine Bible at the, at the, at the fine dining restaurant, right? Pass it off. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know? And so, um, my course gives you that confidence to be able to, A, know the difference, um, there's a, there's a, um, a, a section in my course where I specifically talk about price. Like, 
what's the difference between a $10 bottle of Cabernet and a $100 bottle of wine? Does that mean that that bottle is you know, nominally better? Or is it just, is it the marketing behind it? Is it the region? Is, the, is it the shipping? You know, what all goes into the cost of a bottle of wine? And so when you understand that, and you understand the quality uh, levels of wine, then you can make a more educated decision on what you want to buy at the restaurant. You can make a more educated decision, uh, uh, you know, at the grocery store, at the liquor store, whenever you're buying a bottle of wine. And you can do it with confidence. And you know you're not going to make uh, a mistake or you're not going to make a regrettable decision. Yeah, I like you, you even break it down to how to correctly open the bottle, how to correctly yeah. pour it. Yeah. If, I mean, that's something that I... You know, I, I know a lot of people who are extremely knowledgeable in wine, but they destroy it trying to get it open sometimes. Yeah. And then sometimes you've been at the restaurants and they just do it like a fine art, like they're wrapping the most beautiful right. gift. It, it, there's you something sexy. Like there's sex. There, you know, once you get it down, it's super sexy being able it to is. open up a wine and hold it and open it and, you know, pull out the cork and once, you know, switch move. Oh, it's sexy. Yeah, there's none of that, all that metal that's going to cut you sticking. Right, out. yeah, you're not, you don't have the jagged foil and, you know, the cork's not breaking off and you're not spilling it everywhere. Yeah, I mean, and, but here's the thing, once, you, I mean, it's art, it's, it really is art. I believe And that. so whenever you learn that, oh my gosh, you just feel so empowered and you, I feel pretty sexy every time I open up a bottle of wine, not going to lie. Well, it is. It's it's just it's it's a very romantic, sexy vibe. You Absolutely. Know, you know, it's bringing families together. It's just a, such a nice, it's just like chill. You know, it's just, you know, I don't know. It's just fun. And like you said, it's very sexy. Yeah. And, and um, oh, shoot, I just had a question I was going to ask you as far as the wines. That oh, this. Okay, so now here we are. We're tasting wines. We're learning how to taste them. How are we tasting them in your course? Do we go out and buy the wine? Do we order it through you? And then as part of the course, how does that happen? Great question. No, so I don't, um, I don't, uh, uh, not yet anyways, I don't have a wine kit that I'm including with the course. Uh, that'll probably be included at the next level course where, um, you know, if you get the course, I'll ship you a little wine kit and then we can, you know, kind of taste through each region. You know, we'll have okay. a wine from France, Italy, Australia, so on and so forth, all the major growing regions, and then we can kind of taste the difference. Uh, but right now, it's really just kind of wine 101, wine 202 to really just get you comfortable with learning, you know, like I said, the different grape varietals, uh, the different structural elements of grapes, um, uh, how to pick out a wine, what's the difference between a $10 bottle of wine and a $100 bottle of wine, uh, and things like that. So it's really, I don't want to say it's entry level because it's definitely a little bit more elevated than that. Uh, but if if you've never even tasted a glass of wine, but you're interested, um, you know, this course is for you. And I like to say, even if you're a whiskey drinker, a bourbon drinker, or a beer drinker, this course is for you because it it, it, it touches on a lot of the same production methods and things like that. So, And, and, and for everybody uh, listening and watching, everything that uh, Matthew Loren has talked about up to this point, his book, his, his, his uh, the course, anything, I promise you in the show notes below, Every link to find Matthew and everything Matthew Wine will be available to you. And there's even still more to learn. So now you're an educator, you're, you're, you're a distributor, an importer, a collector, you're a sommelier yourself. And now- You make me sound way cooler than I really am, I promise. No, I, I'm not even done. So now <laughs> you, you, have, you have festivals. There's events that you do. Would you like to talk about those? I would love to. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so coming out of a pandemic, um, you know, we had this bright idea, or actually in the midst of a pandemic, it was right in the middle of a pandemic, we had this great idea to throw a music, wine, food, lifestyle festival. Why? Because we like to take chances. We're from Vegas, I guess. So um, so, uh, so we started, or actually in 2019, uh, there's a team of people uh, in San Diego uh, that started a, a wine festival called the Blended Festival. Um it was a great success in 2019. They had full intentions of coming back in 2020. We all know what happened, so that, that didn't get to happen. So in 2021, uh, we decided to kind of take a risk and say, we don't know what's going to happen summertime into fall. We don't know if the country's still going to be locked down. We don't know if vaccines are going to be readily available. We don't know, but we're going to take this chance. And so we decided to throw, put together a, a, the Blended Festival 
in uh, three major markets. So we did Nashville, San Diego, and Austin in 2021. Um, and we totally made the right decision because we were able to pull them off. We didn't have to shut down. We, you know, we, we didn't have any big COVID scares or anything like that. Uh, but it was, it was fantastic. It was, it was an incredible, incredible experience. And so, um, so when I talk about the blended festival, uh, I like to talk about it in terms of, you know, kind of my role and, um, and the, and, and in terms of the wine world, but I'll kind of give everybody a, a brief overview of what the blended festival is. So the blended festival is, is, is essentially it's a wine, music, food, and lifestyle festival. So each, each element plays a very, very important role. Um, so think of like Coachella meets Bottle Rock meets, you know, A ASL. Um, that's what it is, all wrapped up in one. But we we kind of hyper focus on different elements. So of course we have the main musical element and the main music stage where you know we had Nelly, we've had Blanco Brown, uh, we've had Cascade, we've had all these major artists perform at 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 uh, on the blended stage. Um, so that's kind of the musical element and the talent element. Uh, then we have the food culinary element. So we really take pride in each city that we go into. Josh Cofield, our culinary director, um, has this enormous culinary stage where he's got, you know, multiple cameras and, and mirrors. And so you get to watch people throughout the whole entire festival, if you're into the food world, how to make a steak or how to make a, you know, I mean, it's how to make all these amazing things and it's being filmed. And it's like, it's like watching a cooking show on the Food Network. And so we have James Beard award-winning uh, chefs that are, that are doing performances. We have uh, expert mixologists that are coming on, on the stage, showing us how, how to make, uh, showing the crowd how to make uh, amazing cocktails and, uh, and things like that. So it's a really unique experience to go to a festival. And if you're into the food and cocktail and mixology world, like to be able to get that kind of experience. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the wellness uh, element. And uh, that's something that we really felt was important, especially in the midst of, you know, the stresses of people losing their jobs and getting sick and being, uh, you know, confined to their homes for extended periods of time. We wanted to pay attention not only to like getting people out and so and getting them socializing again, but we wanted to pay attention to the mental health of what this la the last two years going on three mm -hmm. has put us all through. Yeah. And so our wellness uh, uh, element deals with that. So we have, you know, uh, therapists, we have IV, uh, drip therapy, you know, like if you're dehydrated, especially at a festival, you're drinking a lot. And so we do the IV therapy, but we have like the sound baths and we have yoga and we have people that you can go talk to if you're like, dang, I'm just having a really rough go at this whole pandemic thing. It's been really stressful. I've lost my job. Like we have outlets for you to be able to go talk to people, which uh, which we felt like was a really important thing to be able to kind of deal with like your mind and body throughout the pandemic and coming and hopefully coming out of the pandemic now. And then, you know, and then the crown jewel. Uh, I, I don't want to say me, but the crown jewel is the wine tent. Um, and so, which is, um, tent. which is my tent. Yeah. So I'm the wine director of the festival, um, and the executive sommelier for the blended festival. And, um, so coming into this, um, I really, you know, didn't, I didn't, my goal wasn't to just put a bunch of wine in a wine tent and call it a wine festival. Not you. I felt, that was too cheap. It was too easy. Um, it, it's not in line with my brand as a sommelier and as the Lord of Wine. Uh, it's not in line with what I felt like Blended wanted to do with a wine festival. Okay. And so I really put some intent and some, and, and some thought behind how I wanted to curate the experience uh, at Blended. And so everything is thought out. The layout of the tables, the flow, even how I lay out each vendor and booth has a particular uh, intent behind it. So I'm not going to put, you know, a cab next to, uh, you know, another cab, right? I want it to be, I want it to make sense, right? And so not only that, um, I, I created multiple different experiences throughout the wine tent. And so um, 
in, you know, I kind of understand trends in the American palate. And so I understand that most, most people are calibrated to like California cabs, right? They like that over extracted high alcohol, you know, just, you know, just mm, in your you know, yeah. voluptuous, sexy, you know, high alcohol wine uh, that come from California, like your Napa cabs and your orange swifts and your prisoners and things like that. And so I created a booth for those types of people, right? So you can go to a Cabernet, uh, the Cabernet experience, right? Uh, and you can get those. You can get those cab uh, those Cabernets from from Napa and the the big brands that everybody's familiar with. However, however, <laughs> I want you to be able to learn and to grow. And so, when you're at that booth, I take you on a world journey of Cabernets. So I say, listen, not only are you going to get this Napa Cab that you love, but that's what's going to draw you into the booth, right? Yeah. But then you're going to get to taste a Cabernet from Burgundy. Then you're going to get to taste a Cabernet from Chile. Then you're going to get to taste a Cabernet from Australia and maybe even one from, from Italy, right? So now you're going to get to kind of expand your palate and learn more about the world through wine. And you didn't even mean to, right? Same with Pinot Noirs. I have a Pinot Noir booth where everybody loves her, you know, Sonoma Coast, Russian River Pinot Noirs. But man, have you ever had a Burgundy Pinot Noir. Oh my gosh! Let me write home about it. It's it's life changing. Let me have okay. a sip. It's a cure all. So, I want, you, you're making me want to go get one. You should. I'm, I I should have I should have invited you to have a drink with me. My apologies. <laughs> but or I probably just shouldn't have finished mine from last night. So. <laughs> So, um, so, so I created these, you know, I have about 15 to 13, uh, 13 to 15 different uh, wine experiences that are curated specifically in addition to, um, in addition to all the other wine vendors. So I have, you know, the Cabernet experience, the Pinot Noir experience. I have an Italian wine booth. I have a French wine booth. So you can go, man, I've never had a Burgundy wine or I've never had a Bordeaux blend. Okay. Because they're always too expensive, or I can't read the bottle, or I don't understand it. So now you get to go experience it, right? Yeah. Um, and, and then I have a champagne booth. And, 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 a, 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 it's called the Blended Bubble Bar, and um, or <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the Blended Bubble Bar. I think that's what I what I called it last year. Uh, but, so I have champagnes from all over the world. I have proseccos from all over the world. I have cabas from from you know all over the world. And so you get to if you're in that bubble space and you love the bubbles and you want to feel fancy. Man, I've got, I've got them all. Uh, and then, uh, in addition to all those curated, you know, experiences to be able to help you grow and learn your palate, um, I like to be able to support uh, whatever wineries are in the are, are you know local to that specific region. And so, um, I have anywhere from fifteen to twenty different uh, local vendors, uh, wineries. Uh, from that particular region so they can get you know kind of that exposure that blended yeah. brings their, to their community and we've always been about you know partnering with the community we're not just some traveling festival that just wants to come and you know come you know do a festival and then leave no we want to build relationships we want to build community um, and so you know in the wine tent I make sure that 50% of the vendors that are in the wine tent are local or as regional as can possibly be. Because I understand if you're in, you know, Oklahoma, you may not have a bunch of wineries in that particular region. Yeah. Uh, but I do like to showcase as, as many local vendors as possible. Same with our culinary stage. We bring in a lot of local restaurants, a lot of food vendors from the region. Actually, 100% of them are from the local you know, the local community. So that's, that's a, that's a core value that we have at Blended is to be able to build those relationships and invest into the local community. That's amazing. So do you have your dates and locations for 2022? So uh, in 2021, we did Nashville, San Diego, and Austin. We did three cities. 2022, we're expanding to six to eight markets. We're still going to do those three cities and then we're going to expand to, you know, quite a few more. Um, we are in the final stages of figuring out our, our tour dates and our cities, and uh, that should be uh, announced hopefully in the next thirty days. Because then we're going to be uh, then we're going to be launching cities, and it's going to be an incredible, incredible year. So we're really, really excited. I'm really, really excited about what we're going to be uh, doing in the wine tent and uh, all the wines that we're going to be showcasing and things like that. That's going to be so much fun. I am going to be a Tennessean. Uh, hopefully very, very, very soon. So by the time oh, you have that date, I will be there. So I am going better to be there. that one. You better I don't be have there. a house yet. Just know I'm moving there. 
to I'm Nashville. Leaving. So to Nashville specifically? Uh well we're looking more towards um Knoxville. Knoxville, thank you. Okay. Yeah, the Knoxville area, but uh cool. I've been in Nashville. We're still looking in Nashville too, so it's not definitely set but wherever it is we're going because we're going to i'll tell you your your nashville is one of my favorite cities in the whole entire country it the people there That's are incredibly awesome. incredibly people. amazing the food the food scene's huge the music scene's huge blend is going to be huge this year or there so i love nashville so yeah, obviously we went, to, nashville. we went there for um a month this summer first time ever in 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 tennessee in that area. And we went to Nashville, had a blast. The people were so amazing. I just said, this is, this is, this is our home. This is where we need to be. And I might be following at, in your footsteps one day. You'll see. We'll see. Hey, everybody. Is. <laughs> so, and, and just so everybody knows, I will make sure in the show notes below will be the link to the blended festival. And when you say festival, is it a whole weekend? Yes. So it's a two day festival. Uh, we open up on Friday. And, uh, and then we close on Saturday or actually oh, the true. festival's Friday and Saturday. And then we have a, uh, a recovery day on Sunday okay, where we usually partner with a, uh, you know, we, we, we like to do pool parties, sky deck parties where we're doing a rooftop pool lounge and, uh, you know, we have a DJ, we have music and, uh, things like that. And, and, and it's just kind of a day to just, you know, recover and relax. And we invite everybody that came to the festival, uh, to come to our recovery party, and, um, you know, we, we just like to hang out with the community and, and with people that came to the festival and, and just hang out and, you know, hang out by the pool side and, and relax. Yep. And so it's, it's, it's essentially a three-day festival or a three-day event. I love it. I love it. Now, when you're not doing these big, huge festivals, you have a sommelier series that you do out there in Vegas. And um, I'm going to just take a second and pause. I want everybody to just see a very quick uh, video. It's a beautiful video of exactly what Matthew's sommelier series is. So uh, let's take a look at it real quick. Great. Okay, we are back. That is something I want to attend. I've watched the video over and over again. So explain what your Sommelier series is. So the Sommelier series I started um, in 2021 uh, with the idea of giving you your personal Sommelier experience uh, at a restaurant to where you can kind of get educated about wine. Um, and it not be intimidating because, you know, a lot of wine dinners that I've been to, it's somebody, some winemaker coming in and pontificating about the wines that he's made and all of his land and all the money he's spent and all this and that. And he doesn't make it relevant. And I know I'm not, you know, talking down to any winemakers. Okay. I've had some really amazing experiences. But again, a lot of it is is intimidating. And so um, what I do at the Sommelier series is uh, I partner with local restaurants uh, to bring in the wines that I am featuring and showcasing either through my distributorship or through the wines that I'm, you know, uh, creating and making. Uh, and then I come and I'm kind of, you know, your personal sommelier. So I have a wine flight. I work with the, with the chef 
and uh, we usually do a wine flight and a, and a food pairing. Okay. And, uh, and so I, instead of standing on some pedestal, making it about me, I make the experience about you. I come table side. I tell you about every single wine that is featured on the menu uh, that you're tasting through and how it pairs with the food. And I give you kind of a background on the wine, you know, how, you know, how to taste it, the structural elements. Uh, and then, and then we just have a 10 minute conversation table side. And, and, and we just kind of talk about the experience and what you're tasting and what you're feeling and, 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 you know, what your favorite wines are. And uh, really it's just, it's just an opportunity for me to just kind of make wine about you and for you to be able to learn what your new favorite wines are um, and, and, and just make it a really fun date night out, whether it's with you and your husband or wife, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, like I'm doing um, an event here on the 25th, which is a some way series on the, uh, in February, I'm doing a singles mixer. Uh, in March, I'm bringing in a winemaker from Napa uh, here in Las Vegas. And uh, so, yeah, it's really just an opportunity. It's just a different experience. It's just a different way to experience wine uh, to make it more you know, personable and relevant to your life and to hopefully educate you and make you a little bit more comfortable trying wines you probably otherwise wouldn't try, uh, try before. Um, and so I'm actually taking the Sommelier series on the road this year. Uh, I'm going to be doing uh, some events in Oklahoma. I'm going to be doing some events in Nashville, uh, and then also probably LA and San Diego. So it's going to be a very busy year for the Sommelier series. It's not only that, just you in general. My gosh, you're going to be all over the place. You're traveling all over doing your Sommelier series, which again, you'll be linked up. Everybody, trust me, you'll be able to, you know, look into it, make your reservations, whatever's necessary to get to do it. Is it a once a month? Typically, I do it once a month in, in each city or at each restaurant. Um, so, you know, as this thing grows, um, you know, I might be doing different different restaurants in, in, in each city. So in Las Vegas, where I live, uh, I'm, you know, I partner with multiple different restaurants. So I might be doing the Sommelier series a couple of times, two, three, four times a month in Las Vegas, but at, at different restaurants uh, each week. That's amazing. When do you And different speak? wines. Uh, I don't. And that's okay. <laughs> You are busy. You are busy. You're teaching. You're, <laughs> you're doing your own your own wine end of it. You are doing events. You're. I mean, you're busy. Well, you know, as a, as a cliche saying goes, you know, find what you're passionate about, and you'll never work a day in your life. This isn't work. This isn't busy. This isn't stressful for me. I mean, it's it's an opportunity for me to to talk about what I'm passionate about and what I love about. And, and hopefully that will bleed onto you. And, 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 you know, as you know, you may not understand the wine to, to my, to my level and that's perfectly fine, but hopefully, you know, that passion will, will, will be able to uh, be imparted into you. And it's something that you can find, uh, find some, some, some new, uh, you know, passion and, and, and vigor for. So. I just can't wait to learn. I, like I said, I'm a sponge. So I, I just know that there's so much more for me to absorb. And you've already given me a whole list of to-dos. I need a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, you're definitely going to have some homework for sure. Yeah. So you had mentioned earlier, you said that you could, um, with your advanced wine course, you might have, you know, a wine package. What's in an advanced wine course? So once you kind of get that fundamental, you know, knowledge and you're comfortable with that, and but then you want to take it to the next level, then we'll start talking about the different wine regions and what uh, what's all involved in, in each one of those regions. Because, Cal, you know, we're, you know, most Americans are very, very familiar with California wines, maybe even some Oregon wines. Um, and that's kind of where their, their palate is calibrated, right? Uh, but then once you start talking about European wines, it's a completely different ballgame. You know, there's different laws that di dictate, you know, what grape varietals can be grown in specific regions. There's laws that are written on the books as far as, you know, what, you know, how long they have to age those wines, um, when they can release them, uh, you know, what all those types of things. And so we'll go a little bit deeper into those types of questions as far as like, well, what is a white Burgundy? What is a red Burgundy? What are the Bordeaux blends? 
right? A lot of people don't know those types of things. Uh, you know, Italy, Italy is is something that even in, uh, not intrigue, well, it does intrigue me, but it still intimidates me because there's so many different growing regions and so many different grape varietals that I'm still like, it still makes my head spin. Uh, but we start to slowly unpack that. We start to talk, talk a little bit more about, you know, uh, the different um, uh, things that can go wrong in wine, you know, like, and how to identify those. Oh man, this wine bottle has cork taint or, you know, bread, you know, those types of wine flaws. And so, you know, that's kind of the, the elevated level of, uh, of the next course. And then, um, you know, like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll feature, um, you know, a little six pack or 12 pack of wines. And so with each course, we'll learn about a different region. We'll be able to taste through those particular wines together. And that, does that come with a Beautiful certificate diploma. Yep, absolutely. So every course that you come through, or every course that uh, uh, that, that will come with a certificate um, that is hand signed by me and uh, mailed by me, and uh, you get to hang it up if you so wish at your home or your office, and it's uh, it's uh, it's great. I'm a, I'm I'm an overachiever. I have to hang up everything. So it would be okay. <laughs> me too. I, every, I need a little, reminder. I doesn't matter how big or small, I've got to hang it up. So yeah, I got to hang it up. If I completed something and I you did to, well, you know, you have to be proud of those things. Yeah, you absolutely have to be proud of those those achievements and those accomplishments. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, again, I am just absolutely floored with all of that you do. I do. I dare ask, what is next? <laughs> Um, oh boy, what's next? Well, in addition to the Sommelier series, the advanced wine course, uh, growing the blended festival, um, you know, this year is, is, is giving me the opportunity, God willing, uh, to be able to consult and invest in a couple of restaurant and wine groups, uh, to be able to go in and, uh, uh actually, you know, own a wine program, have some equity in, in, in a wine restaurant or a wine bar, and um, so, you know, that's still a little far off, um, you know, ground hasn't been broken on, on, on those two projects that I'm uh, hopefully going to be working on. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I even mention it now, um, you know, just putting it into the universe because uh, that's, that's a lifelong dream to own a restaurant and a wine bar. And uh, so for me to have that opportunity kind of knocking at my door, uh, you know, I feel um, exceptionally blessed. And very proud that, uh, you know, that that opportunity would even be at my feet. And so um, I'm going to work like hell to be able to make that happen and to make it come to fruition this year. And uh, that's just part of my word of the year uh, is being prosper is being prosperous and being disciplined and seeing these projects through and to growing and uh, to, you know, being uh, kind of a, a, a grown past my comfort comfort zone. So we'll see. Well, I. I have no doubt listening to everything you've done, starting in a family who didn't even drink and where you've come to now, <laughs> I right. don't think there's any doubt that this is going to happen. So I'm just going to okay. say, have fun with it. It's going to happen. I promise. Well, I appreciate your confidence and thank you so much. And I also want to thank you. I've learned so much just by talking with you today. I've had so much fun talking with you. I know I'm going to attend one of your blended festivals. You better attend festival. all of them. I promise. Awesome. I Please. promise, though. I just, I just want to thank you so much for being a guest on Shannon Confidential. Um, I know there's going to be so many people who are going to get something out of this. I know I am doing your your online course with my girlfriends. They've already promised me so. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Well, you know, if you don't mind, I would like to extend um, to all your all your viewers and listeners. I'd like to extend a, a free copy of my book. That is that. Thank you. That'd be okay. Thank you. I will link it up. Cool. So if you're interested or intrigued or confused by wine, um, I'd love to give you a free copy of my book. I know it's backwards. The so many secrets to tasting wine like a pro. Um, but um, I'll just give you the link and we, we can put it in the comments. Yeah, it'll be in the show below. notes. Everything the we talked about today will be below us. Perfect. Okay. Everything. Great. That's my blessing to you guys. And um, if you received the book and you received some value, um, please, 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 like, let me know. Like, if you have questions, I'm here for you. I'm your personal sommelier. Like, message me on Instagram. Shoot me a message on Facebook. Shoot me an email. Like, let me know what wines you're drinking. If you have any questions, like, oh, man, I'm confused about something, just hit me up. Like, I would love to build a relationship with you and have a glass of wine with you, even if it's virtually, and just kind of get to know who you are and where you're at in your wine journey. Thank you. That sounds 
it's like so much fun. Everybody out there, do what he just said. <laughs> do it. Well, I'm going to toast you with my water. Yeah. And thank you very much. Cheers for Cheers. being on Shannon Confidential today. Clink. God bless. The, the pleasure was all mine. Thank you, Matthew Lorraine.